Hey everyone, today I'm here to do a nether steps to building a house uh, series video and today I'm going to be moving on to our step two or I guess step like five to ten or something like that. I will link my first video in the series up above so that you can watch that um, before you watch this one. So I am trying to keep a list of what I have already talked about and then what I need to talk about in each video that I'm going to film. So I believe I have, I have seven topics to go through so I want to try and do this as quick as possible so it's not a long video. So the last thing that we left off with was our major utilities, that's hydro, septic, and well. And now we actually get to get into the drawings for the house itself. So the first thing that you have to do is come up with your foundation. You came up with your layout of your house, you have your base design, you have maybe some measurements about how big it is, and then what you need to come up with is a actual foundation drawing. So it looks something like this, and you can see that it's a very simplistic drawing. Around here is the foundation of the house, and around here is the foundation of the garage. On this drawing, it basically shows the measurements of all of the walls, the basement walls, the thickness of the walls, and what you're going to be using as your foundation base. So you have two types of foundations. There's probably more, but the two I'm going to discuss is most known to me. So there is a regular formed concrete wall. So what you do is you basically put up a plywood form with bracing and you fill it with concrete and then you tear off the forms, the plywood and lumber and such. And then you le are left with this concrete foundation wall. There is another option that we've actually decided to go with and that is an ICF foundation. An ICF means insulated concrete forms. So that means that instead of using plywood to form up your concrete walls, it's actually an insulation type foam that you use as the forms. You pour the concrete in it and you actually don't tear them off. They stay there and that becomes your insulation in your basement. So you no longer have to frame your basement or insulate your basement because it's already done. So we sent this drawing to, I believe, two places. The first one is one company that we've kind of dealt with for a lot of things. And then the other company was just one of those ones that we wanted to be able to compare to something. So we sent this off to them and what they did was actually priced out the forms for this part of the house. The garage does not need to be insulated, the foundation, so we're not doing ICF and we're doing the regular concrete forms for the garage because the, those are only about four feet deep and you don't have a basement underneath the garage. So this will be the ICF and this will be regular concrete forms. So we sent that off and we got a price from that company for $12,179. And that includes all of the forms, that is the straight forms, the corner forms, the uh, taper top forms, the form lock, which is a metal grid piece thing that you have to put in the top of it to hold it together. You zip ties, because you zip tie all the pieces together, your peel and stick waterproofing, your Durarock mesh and prep coat, adhesive to glue all the blocks together, and your rebar because you have to put in rebar in your foundation and then they also give you an estimate for how much concrete you would need for the forms. So we loved the brand that they quoted us on. They have like, there's three companies or four companies. There's lots of companies that do it, but three or four in our area that supply ICF forms and Logic's brand, uh, we have found that is the most helpful out of all of them. Logic's website, I'll have it linked below. I'm not associated with them at all. I'm not sponsored or anything, but they actually give to the public all of their CAD drawings, helpful information, any which way that you need, they are offering it up. 
So we actually did a seminar with them. It's called like a webinar. You go and you sit in like a chat room. They will talk about and show you a slideshow uh, presentation and walk you through their product. So also you could ask questions beforehand and they'll answer them in the webinar. And then also after the webinar is done, you can continue asking questions. So we love that about them. They were super helpful and we cannot wait to work with them. And the cost difference, because a lot of people ask how much is ICF versus a regular concrete form? And they pretty much equal out because one, the labor is cheaper and two, you get the insulation already built in. You don't have to pay for studs and insulation and all of that. So it pretty much is the exact same cost, a little bit more, but like maybe within a couple hundred dollars. So that's why we actually chose to do ICF and not regular concrete forms. Moving on, you then have to calculate your beams in your basement and your jack posts in your basement. So that's basically what's going to be holding up your house and it's not going to cave into this big hole. So on this drawing, you will see it's pretty much the exact same. However, there are two green solid lines. It's actually lines with showing some circles in between and that shows the beams. So we are doing regular lumber beams. We're going to be putting them all together ourselves. And then the jack posts are just metal three inch jack posts that are going to go every 10 feet or so. So that is something that we didn't send off to a company to price out because it's just regular lumber. The jack studs I think are like anywhere from like $65 to $85 depending on where you go. And then the other thing is you have to come up with your stairs. So we figured out where those were going to go in our house layout and then we um, put them into this drawing. On top of your beams you have your floor joists. And in our case, we are using eye joists. These are man-made joists instead of just regular lumber. It's a man-made eye joist. And what we did was we sent a drawing like this to the companies that sell eye joists. And you can see along here, they run on top of these beams and sit on the concrete wall. So the beams actually sit inside the concrete wall. You do a cutout. We sent that away and we were sent a quote along with, so this is the important part that you need to have for eye joists and anything structural, is a drawing from the company itself that is engineered stamped. So their program is automatically puts it together for them and whatever and it is called an engineered drawing so this is what they sent it's basically the exact same thing that we drew however this is something that we would actually send for our permit and then along with that we got a quote and the quote for that was four thousand one hundred and twenty three dollars for all of those eye joists, which the other company that came in was around 6,000. So that was really good to know that they were way underpriced. The next thing that we did just quickly, once again, we don't have to send it out to anyone, but we just double checked our sheeting on top of the eye joists. You have to put plywood for your floor. And we just went through and showed uh, four by eight sheets all along and counted them up so that we would know how many we would need. So the next major thing that you have to decide in your house build is your windows and doors. Before you can put a roof on your walls or even make your walls, you have to know what's going into your walls. So you have to know for each room what windows you would like, what sizes, and then also doors. So we did this drawing and this was over time. Um, this is actually a finished drawing, but this was not the drawing that I did to figure all this out. I just kind of went through each room and decided what size window I would like or what would look best. In certain rooms like bedrooms, you have to have certain size requirements for egress. Um, that's to escape if there was ever a fire. So this is actually a finished drawing of the whole house, but I just wanted to show you that we have here showing 
the windows so I have them picked out and the reason why you have to do that is because you need to know your header sizes and also your supports for your walls. Other than that, it's just 16 inch on center framing around your house and then also your garage doors. You need to know your size for your headers as well. Any of you don't know, headers are basically what holds up the roof if you end up with a hole in your wall. If you put a hole there and don't support that hole, then it could cave in your roof. So that is what a header does. It's a big piece of lumber that goes over top of a hole and then supports down to the foundation. So that was the next step. Um, and we didn't actually even draw the walls until we knew the roof as well. The walls you can kind of do afterwards, but you do need to know this for when you go to get your roof quoted or structurally engineered. So I'll get into that now. We knew what we wanted our house to look like. We knew where we wanted our peaks and our valleys and our gables and that type of thing. So what we did was sent this drawing to our roofing company and you can kind of see all of the, the hips and the valleys and we also labeled where there would be gable ends. And then also there are a few different things that we uh, wanted differently in our roof system. We wanted a coffered ceiling in our master bedroom, which it looks like this. And then we wanted cathedral ceiling in our living room, which looks like this. So that complicates things a little bit more than just a regular roof. And the type of roof system that we're going with is roof trusses. So when we sent them this drawing, we also sent them a drawing that looks like this. This is the back wall showing all of the windows where we wanted our cathedral, our point loads to our foundation, as well as our coffered ceiling drawing. And it shows in our bedroom the sizes and that type of thing. So after sending that to them, they sent us back this drawing. And basically all it is is showing each individual truss, they label them, and then they send us with that a material list of each individual truss, how many we need, um, what they're called, the raised heel heights and all that. And they actually also send us each individual structural drawing of the trusses. So in here is a huge stack and we even have a huge stack of each individual truss. So every truss that you see here will be an actual drawing of it with the uh, measurements live and dead loads and all of that. So that is amazing. Um, this company was really good. They're the same people that we're going to be going with for the eye joices and they didn't have to provide this information really until we ordered the trusses and they provided it with just a estimate. So that is amazing. So technically we could have used them. We could have built these ourselves, sent this in and had it stamped by an engineer and we're good to go. Um, but because we like the company and it's really cheap for them to do that, they are going to be getting the business from us. Of course, after all of that, they sent us our quote and our quote was, let me just look for roughly $14,000. The other company that is actually doing the ICF or supplying the ICF quoted roughly 19,000. So they were $5,000 cheaper and we'll definitely be going with them. Sadly, this company doesn't supply ICF. Otherwise we would be doing a whole house package. Uh, with this company. So that's about it for the structural end of things. This is basically what you end up with once you're done all of the structural drawings. Uh, you can see your roof system, your studs, your doors, your windows, your foundation, um, all of that. And then of course there's one other thing on the truss roof you have to have plywood sheet that is part of the structural end of it they list it on the drawing stating that you must sheet your roof so that's one of those things again it's just conventional 
uh, lumber and building materials so you get it from Home Depot or wherever. For each individual wall we have a drawing like this. So I think that is pretty much it for this segment of this series. If you learned something new please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely answer them uh, in a Tiffany's tell all or in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so that you're getting my videos as soon as they come out and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.